Earthquakes hit Taiwan and make things a little rough. Net neutrality might be coming back here in the US and AMD keeps doing what we always love them for and Nvidia would never. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, April 4th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some unfortunate news that happened over in the country of Taiwan, which is its own independent country. And it was unfortunately hit by a 7.4 magnitude earthquake quick, which unfortunately led to a bit of destruction in the island nation. And especially because a lot of tech companies are based over there, such as TSMC, which is the foundry company that makes all of the things that you like from Nvidia and Apple and AMD and a bunch of other companies. They actually had to put things on pause as well as Micron and Framework have all announced that they had to suspend some of their stuff, especially as they waited to see if all of their employees were okay. They had to check all of their major infrastructure to make sure everything was safe to continue and resume work. And TSMC, SMC thankfully has said that there was no damage to its critical tools, so it's going to continue its operations despite the fact that this was the largest earthquake in 25 years to hit Taiwan. So I hope everybody that we know out there, especially as we've gone to Computex so many times and we've met a lot of people from Taiwan, it's a great country, we love going there, and I hope that everybody's safe and that their recovery from all of this is swift and is happening soon. But it's good news that things are not shut down for too long. But what's also good news is today's video sponsor, Silverstone. And they want you to know that while there's a ton of liquid cooling options that are coming out all of the time, they want to know that they have not forgotten you air cooling aficionados. Silverstone's got your back because they just launched two brand new air coolers that take advantage of their larger 140 millimeter fans because it can provide higher airflow at lower noise compared to 120 millimeter models. There's the single tower version called the Argon V140 ARGB, which is designed to fit on just basically any motherboard without you having to worry about interference with RAM or other components around the CPU. Its performance is on par with many twin tower styled 120 millimeter coolers. But for those of you that have the room to spare, you're gonna wanna check out the Hydragon. I love that name. Also known as the Hydragon D140 ARGB, as it'll give you up to 10 degrees cooler performance compared to the already great Argon V140 ARGB. And they tested that on a 1390 900K running at 180 watts. This Hydragon dropped the temps 10 degrees over the Argon right here. And both coolers are only 160 millimeters tall, so they can fit in a lot of cases that standard 140 millimeter coolers actually couldn't. So in case you're looking for a lot of airflow at a lower noise performance and coming in at a size that's closer to 120 millimeter coolers, you can check out the Argon V140 or the Hydragon D140 at the link in the video description. Big thank you to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video and being an ever continuing part of UFC. Tech. I love Silverstone's products. I love Silverstone in general. I keep talking about how they were in my first PC built here on this channel, but I've used them so many times over the years and it's just, it's great to see what they're coming out with new. And that's what I say about Facebook. Gee golly, can I love to wait to see what new things they have coming out like video stuff. I watch all of my videos on Facebook it, because you know what they give you? No options. You couldn't scrub through videos and now they're going to ruin it because they're adding video controls like a slide bar to their videos. I don't want that. I want to not be able to control long form videos whatsoever, speed them up or whatever. They're also launching a full screen vertical video thing, kind of like TikTok. Man, why are they getting modern features? Facebook was so great because it was so outdated. Which speaking of things being outdated, let's talk about the internet infrastructure and stuff going on here in the US because the FCC is looking to potentially reapply net neutrality, which was something that was actually stripped back in 2017 under the previous US government administration. So the vote to reinstate net neutrality appears to be taking place on April 25th. And in case you're not fully clear, net neutrality just makes it so that ISPs aren't in control of the internet as much as they currently are. They can't make rules for fast lanes and being able to block or throttle certain types of content or have unfair pricing structures. So re-enabling this, at least according to all metrics, especially back when it was getting repealed, most of the internet sided with the idea that net neutrality was a good thing, at least here in the US. But it'll be interesting to see how it's being reapplied, especially after seven years and what exactly changes as things happen to move forward, which is what Intel is trying to do because they, whoo, they're losing a lot of money, but they want to change the discussion of how 
much money they're actually losing. So Intel's reports coming out indicating that they lost $7 billion in 2023, and they outsource roughly 30% of all of their fabrication production to TSMC instead of doing it in-house. Now, Intel would like to get that number to below 20%, but one of the big things that's happening here with that $7 billion loss is that they've had to build up their fabrication facilities. One of the major reasons why Intel fell behind AMD in a lot of different regions wasn't because they couldn't engineer the chips, it was because they couldn't engineer the fabrication facility in order to make the chips that they wanted to make. And they weren't gonna go to TSMC to make something that they thought they should be able to make themselves. Well, we're here a few CEOs later, and now it seems like Pat Gelsinger finally has this figured out, investing more money into all of these fabrication facilities to make it so that this doesn't happen again, which they're hoping that they will get back onto parity or supersede what TSMC is doing by 2026. But with all of this, they want to talk about how they're going to start changing their financial reporting, kind of trying to make sure that Intel's foundries are being reported separately from like the rest of their business, which kind of makes sense, but also feels like a business move for them to start getting government funding for the CHIPS Act, because if they say, hey, look, we're losing $7 billion a year with our foundry services, but our chip selling services are making tons of money, well, then you, you would need money invested into the foundry services. But it does make a lot of sense because Intel's IFS is different from the actual chip design manufacturing and production, very similar to how AMD does it. But it's also a little weird because like Intel's IFS, at least when they're selling it to themselves, is designed not to make money because they're selling their chips to themselves at cost, not at a profit. But IFS moving forward, when they sell to companies like Arm, is supposed to sell it at a profit. So it's a weird change that's going on that Intel's just gonna have to adjust to as they have these growing pains of trying to grow out this separate arm of their business Business, no pun intended, and also trying to maintain some sort of relevancy when it comes to how they make and design CPUs. Which Intel CEO is saying that this year is probably going to be the worst part, 2023, 2024, them investing so much money in getting their foundry services competitive with Samsung, with TSMC, trying to make sure that they are running that business smoothly is really where all of the investment is going into. We'll see if this actually ends up paying off, because if it doesn't, Bye, Pat Gelsinger. I'm so sorry. It's a big risk. It's a big gamble. We'll see how it goes. And we'll see how Reese goes over to him with the news. I want his deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, deals. Starting off today, we have the Corsair K65 RGB Mini with a 60% wired mechanical keyboard available in a really cool pastel colorway going for only $59.99, making it $70 off. Then next up, we have the classic Fractal Design Mesh Fight 2 Mini Micro ATX case available in black for only $59.99, making it $50 off. And lastly, we have the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8 with this 34-inch 3440 by 1440 175Hz curved gaming monitor going for only $89.99, making it $300 off. But the real savings here are to check your local regional listings for open box deals because they go as low as $530. Couple that with an extended warranty and you might have the deal of the century. But hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it turns out Amazon thinks that they were getting a terrible deal when it comes to their cashierless stores that they had. Their Amazon Fresh stores having a technology known as Just Walk Out, where you could go around into an Amazon store, pick things up, and then just simply walk out, and that would all be tabulated to your Amazon account and billed directly to you, which people did videos on this when it came out. Linus ended up doing a very popular one, but it turns out that despite the fact that a lot of people thought that this was all being done with computer vision, machine learning, AI, advanced technology that Amazon had developed in order to make all of this go round. Turns out that that was not the case. Their AI was simply people over in India who were manually reviewing video footage of these stores to make sure that all of the transactions were accurate. Now that's actually not new news. That was divulged in, I think, March of 2023 that Amazon was using employees over in India to verify all these transactions. So the new news here here is that they are shutting down all of the stores because out of every 1,000 transactions, 700 of them require manual reviews by these employees. So 70% require 
intervention when Amazon wanted it to be close to 0.5% of every transaction could be reviewed and the other 99.5% were actually just fully automated and taken care of. So they did not develop the tech. So instead they're gonna be transitioning all of these stores to a trolley based system where you go around with your little dash cart and you grab your item and it scans it as it puts it into the cart. And who knows whether or not that tech works and they have employees watching from somewhere else who are just viewing you and judging you for how many onions you're buying because no man needs that amount of onions. Who could possibly want or desire such a thing? I don't know who. And I'm curious who is actually going to be checking out Windows 10 past 2025 because Microsoft just announced the pricing to keep that alive in case you want to do it on your personal system. It looks like it's going to cost you 61 bones for the first year per device that you want to keep running on Windows 10. Then it'll double the 122 and then double again to 244 to get Microsoft's extended security updates. So a total of $427 to keep Windows 10. The reason this is novel is because ESU is finally being offered directly to consumers in case you want it, in case you want to get the security updates. Now, logistically speaking, you will still be able to use Windows 10 past October of 2025. They just will no longer give you the security updates. If you want that, you got to pay Papa Microsoft, which is why they're the most valuable company in the world. They're making you pay again for something that you already paid for, okay? You better do it, which is the opposite of AMD's attitude with this because we're getting reports that AMD wants to make more of their software stack for Radeon more open source. They're looking to give it to the community and make sure that it's available and at the discretion for the community to view and to work on, specifically with their Rockham platform or Radeon's open compute platform, which is an API that allows it to run different software. It's one of the things that allows AMD GPUs to run CUDA through a Rockham library. And it started coming out to the regular normie cards like the 7900 XT, GRE, and XTX, which is a big change that they've been making in the last little bit. So this is coming after there's been a few calls for AMD to make some things more open source, and they are choosing to do that, saying that as community interest grows in Rockamon Radeon, we've created a tracker to capture feedback and provide updates. Coming soon, open sourcing additional portions of our software stack and more hardware documentation. So this is just something that AMD continues to do that NVIDIA would never be caught dead doing. You you kidding me? You want open source? No, you pay more cash and we close it up even harder, okay? You want open GPU setups? No, you're gonna pay us an $8 day pass to rent an RTX 4080 from us. And if you don't like that, who are you gonna go to? We'll ship your GPU to somebody else because if you're gonna start complaining about how much we're slipping with timelines on their AI chips, we're just gonna make you suffer a little bit more. Just imagine that entire time that rant was talked was was being spoken by a in sentient oven wearing a leather jacket, which is what I imagine all of you as, especially as I read your comments. So let's go through yesterday's comments with James Cavanaugh saying, I saw floating AVB personas and immediately assumed it was going to be about alien versus predator. Turns out I was wrong. I'm glad I won't have to fight off any xenomorphs while working on spreadsheets in VR. I do like abbreviating the Apple Vision Pro to AVP because I know it confuses people and I'm going to keep doing it. Z Bishop 90 saying 4080 Ti Super DX TX GRE coming soon to China. Maybe and then it'll get banned again. Now I wanna I wanna talk about this comment because it was amazing. We got GSE stream saying, needle in haystack, I see virtual people, chiplets are better than monolithic, in silicon, learn to bus, adder is a snake, what a telescope handle. This feels AI generated, but it also feels like a little misguided compared to what we talked about in hot news yesterday. I don't know, it was fun. It was a great comment. And we got the viewer, 1423, saying, I'd rather get a Toyota all-electric car because those are a well-known brand for reliability, but meh. And then somebody responding saying, too bad the people running Toyota don't believe in full EVs. Yeah, that's unfortunately kind of the big thing when it comes to Toyota and their EV segment. They sold, I think it was reported like roughly 1,000 or 2,000 total EVs in Q1 of 2024. Not a lot. They basically only have the BZ4X, which they co- work on with Subaru 4, which is, it's also known as the Subaru Solterra. And they also had a big issue where it was either late in 2022 or early last year, where they had to recall all of them because the wheels fell off. The reliability on the Toyota all-electric vehicle is that the, the wheels fell off, which is just uh, obviously a, a hilarious, th there's a metaphor in there somewhere, I'm sure. 
I do personally think that Toyota's strategy of hybrids and plug-in hybrids, it's just a wise decision, especially as a lot of infrastructure here in the United States is just not built out for people to go full EV. The charging network infrastructure isn't there. The home charging infrastructure just kind of isn't there. The electric grid also kind of isn't there. So as we transition to potentially having more fully electric vehicles, Toyota's strategy makes a lot of sense. It's not gonna change in the short term. So the fact that they are trying to push what already works for them, I'm on board with it. I actually fully support Toyota in that decision. I would want more EVs from them, but I, I also like, I don't think they're necessarily wrong either. Who I do think is wrong is Mark saying, I think Nvidia is going to leave the USA at the rate things are going. No chance. Mm -mm. No, no. I... I won't even humor that. That's not even remotely possible, okay? They'll just buy the politicians that they need in order to change the laws the way that they want them. They might get, you know, some a Apple antitrust lawsuits at some point, but Apple's still making money hand over fist. They're not gonna leave the US for anywhere else. And then we got Toshi Omai saying, another point to the handheld market is also availability, which is a good point that I didn't think of. It might be easier or even the only legal and official option to get. In some cases, having options is usually good. Yeah, that's one of the big, uh, uh, things when it comes to the ROG Ally, normal people don't uh, d go to go to stores, and uh, the ROG Ally is physically available in Best Buy, whereas the Steam Deck is not physically available in many stores, if at all, here in the United States. So uh, just just availability or being right in front of you, the the ROG Ally definitely meets that mark a little bit. And I have met the mark of hot news. It is done. It is finished. Goodbye.